An algorithm is a step-by-step -step procedure for solving a problem. This is a notion generally applicable to problems encountered in real life. A cooking recipe, for instance, might be designated as an algorithm. However, in computer sciences, algorithm has a special meaning. Formally, it is defined as a step-by-step -step procedure with the following characteristics. Number 1. It must have some important data to operate on it. Number 2. It must produce at least one result. Number 3. It must terminate after a finite number of steps. Algorithms have long and fascinating history. The step-by-step -step procedures for solving geometrical and arithmetical problems can be traced back to the ancient Greeks over a thousand years ago. An efficient method for finding the greatest common divisor of two integers was proposed by Euclid. However, first systematic procedures for performing arithmetic were studied in 50 AD and recorded in an Arabic textbook by the famous Persian mathematician Al-Khwarizm. The word algorithm is, in fact, derived from the name Al-Khwarizm. Algorithm With the advent of computers in recent years, need of appropriate algorithm for solving a variety of problems has sharply arisen. Some common types of algorithm and their uses are Searching algorithms are designed to search for a given data value in a mass of data collections. Sorting algorithms are commonly used in computer applications to arrange data items according to user-specified criteria. Compression algorithms are meant to reduce the size of data and program file for their efficient exchange over the networks. These are also used for compression of image, audio and video data. Fast Fourier Transform is extensively used in digital signal processing. Encoding algorithms are used for encryption of data in secure transmission and exchange of sensitive data. Geometric algorithms are useful for identification of geometric shapes. Pattern matching algorithms are meant for comparing images and shapes. Parsing algorithms are designed to identify different programming construct by the compilers. Classification of algorithms Depending upon the strategy for solving a particular class of problems, algorithms are classified as iterative, divide and conquer, greedy and backtracking. In iterative algorithm, certain steps are repeated in loops until the goal is achieved. Iterative algorithms are used commonly for sorting of small sets of data. In divide and conquer algorithm, a given problem is fragmented into smaller sub-problems. The sub-problem is then partially solved. The algorithm is recursively used over several parts and terminated when further subdivision cannot be continued. The divide and conquer algorithms are frequently used for searching and sorting problems. The greedy algorithms work on the principle that an immediately available best solution at the each step must be chosen without worrying about its effect on subsequent steps. For example, if we want to give change for 73 rupees in minimum number of currency notes, the immediate best solution would be to start with the highest denomination, that is, a 50 rupee note, then two 10 rupee notes, then two rupee note, and finally one rupee note. The greedy algorithms are useful for solving scheduling and graph theory problems. In backtrack algorithm, all possible options are examined by moving back and forth until the solution is found. These kinds of algorithms are useful in graph theory. Two common approaches are depth first search DFS and breadth search first BSF algorithms.
Specification of Algorithm As we mentioned earlier, algorithms play a central role in manipulation of data structures used in any program. In order to code the underlying procedures, it is sometimes useful to describe the algorithm in human-readable form using either natural language or pseudocode. Use of natural language In natural language, we can use words and phrases to describe the procedure and computational steps. For example, words like read, write, compute, set, may work for input, output, computations and assigning values to a variable. Likewise, arithmetical operations can be expressed using words like add, subtract, divide and multiply. The word repeat may be employed to express loop structure. For example, the Euclid's algorithm for finding the common divisor of two positive integers can be expressed in natural languages as shown. The algorithm is used on the observation that common divisor of two integers is also the common divisor of the difference. Use of pseudocode The description of an algorithm in natural language tends to be wordy and verbose. Sometimes it does not clearly define and may even be ambiguous. Pseudocodes provide an alternative and better way of expressing algorithms. Pseudocodes, as the name implies, is a mixture of natural language and high-level programming notation. Although there is no standard format for writing pseudocode, the following notations are commonly used. Identification each algorithm is assigned a name and some identification number. Comments Comments are optional and enclosed in square brackets. Variable names These are expressed in capital letters. Assignment A left arrow indicates assignment statement. Operators Arithmetic and logical operators are identified with mathematical symbols. Input and Output The I.O. operations are shown with words read and write followed by variable names or output message. Control Structure Logical steps are expressed by using the phrase if then, if then else. Loops. The repetitive operations are described by the word repeat that is followed by loop structure described in terms of for or while statements. Specification of algorithm. The Euclid's algorithm for the GCD can be expressed in pseudocode as shown. The pseudocode is not only human readable, it can also be easily translated into a high-level programming code fragment. C++ code for the GCD algorithm is Algorithm Analysis The performance of an algorithm is measured in terms of runtime and storage requirement as a function of input size. An algorithm that provides a correct result but takes enormously long time is not very useful. It is, for instance, of little help in real-time problems which require solution in split seconds. Likewise, an algorithm whose storage requirement increases rapidly with the input size is not amenable to implementation on small computers. Furthermore, there may be trade-off between time and space requirements. Thus, both Time and space analysis is of crucial importance in judging the efficiency of an algorithm. The time analysis uses various techniques to estimate the runtime of an algorithm for a set of input values. Basically, two approaches are adopted which are classified as empirical and analytical. Empirical analysis In empirical method, the runtime of an algorithm is measured in real time 
for different sets of input values. The actual time is plotted against the input size to analyze the growth rate. Figure also shows a time measurements of two algorithms for sorting. The empirical approach has several limitations. It essentially depends on the computing environment such as hardware and operating system. Thus, the result of analysis can vary with platforms. It also depends on the data set chosen for test purposes. The empirical data may not be comprehensive covering all possibilities. To a greater extent, Runtime depends on how efficient the algorithm is programmed for a particular machine. Analytical Analysis The analytical method uses mathematical techniques to estimate the runtime. The method identifies crucial operations in an algorithm that contribute significantly to the overall processing time. The number of key operations can be determined by analyzing the pseudocode for the algorithm. Let us consider the algorithm for finding the largest value in array A of size n. The pseudocode is shown in the figure. Step 1 defines a temporary variable max which is assigned the first element A of 1 of the array. Step 2 and Step 3 compare other elements a of 2, a of 3, 2, a of n with max. When an element greater than max is encountered, the value of max is replaced with current element. Thus, at the end of loop, max would contain the largest array element. By inspecting the pseudocode, we draw the following conclusions. Step 1 involves one axis of array element. Step 2 makes n-1 assignments to variable j. Step 3 retrieves an element n-1 times and makes n-1 comparisons. Step 4 retrieves an element n-1 times and makes at most n-1 comparisons in worst case, assuming that last element is the maximum element. Thus, total runtime for the algorithm is as shown. An important point to bear in mind is that algorithm analysis is not concerned with determining the runtime for a particular value of input. Rather, the analysis is carried out for the entire range of allowed values. 